The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Wednesday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got all the markets in positive territory right now. You're looking at an S&P up 29 points, trading at 43.72. NASDAQ 100 up 77 points, back above 15,100 at 15,102. We got the Dow up 221 points, back above 34,000. 34,020, and the Russell catching a bit as well, up 8 tenths percent right near 2200 the Russell trading 2198 Bitcoin catching a bid off of the lows we've got the last couple sessions you were approaching the $40,000 price point we're trading at 42,350 crude catching a bid as well we get inventory numbers at 1030 this morning you got crude up a buck 23 at 7172 we talked to our man Teddy Kegstat from forex trading unlockcom at 40 past the hour we talk forex we'll talk a little bit of crude as well we'll see what Teddy has to say he's been a bull for a while pushing about $100 crude Gold contract, backing off a bit. Gold's had quite a bit since uh, the lows of Sunday night at 1742. We reach a high yesterday of about 1782. We've backed off a bit to 1774. You have the silver contract right now up 18 cents at 2279. And on a day that we get a Federal Reserve announcement, we get a press conference with Chairman Powell at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time today. We have the 10-year right now basically flat, trading at 133.06. That's correlating to a yield right now of 1.32% in the 10-year. Over in Europe right now, you get the FTSE up 1.4%. CAC Coral up 1.3%. The DAX is up 3 quarters percent. Over in Asia, we have the Shanghai up 4 tenths percent. HSI Hang Seng up half a percent right now. Nikkei in negative territory by about two thirds of a percent. All right, well, let's jump over to the headline of the afternoon. We got a lot going on in the markets, of course, but we are going to get a Fed decision today. Uh, the debate on tape tapering just got a lot trickier is how the Bloomberg article headlines it. Uh, economics modeling shows how shocks at home and abroad could derail the U.S. recovery and force a course correction from the Fed. And they kind of lay out both cases in here in terms of, yeah, from one direction, the debt ceiling deadlock, China property slump, right? You have a lot in the face of it in terms of taking the Fed's proposed taper and bond purchases off autopilot and potentially pushing the first interest rate increase back to 2024. From the other side of that, you have sustained supply chain snarl ups, keeping inflation higher. I mean, we saw it. We're going to get into it. We got FedEx earnings last night. Uh, big numbers in terms of revenue. But what they're dealing with, they're dealing with whether it's uh, supply chain problems. They're dealing with employee problems. They're going to pay higher wages. They're dealing with higher costs. They're dealing with all of that that's hitting their earnings in a big way. And let's not jump over it right now. Look at FedEx You're down 15 bucks off the acceleration yesterday, uh, kind of consolidating right near about 237. Now you take a look at this thing. We were up to 319 folks, you're gonna open at 237. The low back in January is only 234. Remarkable, you give it all back. Not many would have thought when you're trading up here above 310, pushing almost 320 in May, that you actually might re-give all of those back to a yearly low for the current year of 2021. But we're gonna open right near that level. Now, we back this up to a three-year weekly for some context here. Yeah, you're gonna come back down and test this low we had in February. But folks, a year before that, we were trading at $88. OK, so giving back some of the gains. But when you talk about the Fed, you talk about ten, uh, inflationary tendencies. You're seeing it out of FedEx this morning. They got higher costs. They're dealing with wages that they have to pay. Um, they're dealing with potentially supply disruptions, higher costs um, for, for materials, etc. cetera. Uh, nonetheless, FedEx down about 15 bucks on the open today so far at 237 as we got about 20 minutes to go until that open. Uh, so getting back to the Fed, that's what we'll see. We got an announcement at 2 p.m. Eastern time. All things considered, the market looking for <coughs> no change, of course, I should say almost. Uh, anything could happen, but no change in terms of interest rate policy, uh, no change in tapering right now, but it will be interesting in terms of, I think we're gonna get a dot plot 
So you're going to get your first estimation of where those interest rates go in the future. And it will be really interesting to see whether Chairman Powell uses this opportunity to signal any potential tapering of asset purchases that will ensue potentially by the end of this year. Uh, so the market will be waiting at 2 p.m. Eastern time as we accelerate higher. Uh, jumping over to some of the indices, just to take a quick look for context of where we are. Uh, you're talking about the S&Ps almost give back the 50%. You, and that's from the run that we had from May. It was almost a one-way shot. Yes, we had a pullback in June, a pullback in July, and a pullback in August. All of those pullbacks, though, pretty well contained in the upward channel line. We broke below that channel line. Uh, earlier, well, really it was Friday. You broke before that level, and Monday we really crushed uh, out of that channel. Almost a 50% retracement. The lows that we had on Monday, we're talking about 42.93. Uh, 42.86 would have been the exact 50% retracement. Now, I bring that up for some context that the S&P gives back 50% of the run, but man, the run that the NASDAQ has had since May, right, didn't even get to a 3.82. Look at that. You pull back on Monday to a low of 14,807. Uh, if you wanted to get to a 382, you had to go down about an extra 150 points. If you wanted to get back to a 50%, you're talking about almost 500 points below where the lows were on Friday. It's important to have context, folks, of some of the gives back, give backs that would be possible. Uh, and you had the NASDAQ 100 go from 13,000 to 15,750. A lot of that being driven by the FANG stocks. I mean, look at the run that Apple had, right? Apple goes from a price point of 123 to 157. Folks, they have 16.5 billion shares outstanding. And you traded up, uh, what is that, 123? You're talking about $34. You're talking about almost half a trillion dollars in market capitalization that Apple gained from just a period of June to a period of September in three months. There's not many companies, folks, that are worth more than half a trillion dollars, let alone Apple adding adding that kind of market capitalization just over that time. Now, let's just take a quick peek and see what kind of a retracement we're talking about on Apple. Apple almost gets to the 50%, actually. Interesting to see how that happens, right? In terms of Apple almost makes it there. They're the biggest contributor to the NASDAQ 100. Uh, Microsoft, quite the run indeed. Now, Microsoft, look at that. Didn't even get really below the point. 236, uh, let alone the 382 would have been 280. You're sitting at 294, uh, right near that all time high of 305. Google shares, yeah, much the same. Not much of a give back at all. <coughs> Excuse me, let's put this on and see the run we had since May. Yeah, amazing that. I mean, you. You know, all the headlines that we got, folks, all the dramatic numbers that we got, the pullbacks we bought, got in the market this week in terms of Monday's action. Um, and the stocks that are leading it the most, okay, Google barely down off its all-time highs, right? I mean, yeah, that's $140, but we just ran from 2200 to 2900 over the period of three or four months. Microsoft shares, as I talked about, barely a give back from 240 to 305. We're sitting at 295. Now, Apple did have a pullback as we just pulled up there. And we'll add that back to it to see. You're talking about almost making it to the 50%, so contributing to some of that. But man, we got a lot of strength and we got a lot of room. If we really get some pullbacks in some of these equities, um, you know, natural pullbacks are 382s, folks. We're not even close to that level when you look at the likes of Microsoft, Google, et cetera, barely giving up some of the gains of all time highs on these companies. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll come back. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. We'll be right back in three minutes. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TESS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TESS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up 23 points right now. We get the NASDAQ 100 positive by 51, Dow positive by 191. We got a Fed announcement at 2 p.m. Eastern time today. We got a press conference with Chairman Powell at 2.30. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade. Network fast market, folks, every trading day right here on Tiger TV at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey and the team breaking down the day's market action, walking you through hypothetical trade setups, talking about defined risk in that options market. Kevin Hinks, we got Fed Day, man. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. How are you? I'm yep. doing well, a, man. A big day but and a, and a pretty calm market here to start the day as, you know, some of the China problems are easing. Um, we got some good news out of Washington on, on re resolution going there. So you've got a VIX significantly lower. You've got uh, indices higher, and you've got – anticipation that Jerome Powell, as he has done in the past, Tommy, is going to get it right, right? He's going to he's going to thread the needle on his views on the U.S. economy. So uh, I think that's what you're seeing in the overall market. Little good news out of China, little good news out of Washington, not hurting either, Tommy. Yeah, it will be interesting. Uh, he's got quite a way with his words. He's chooses them wisely. He's, uh, he's a good communicator, if not a great communicator out there in terms of uh, – just the way he's able to choose his message, I think. And I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, worried. I'm not really think there's too much volatility, Kevin. I'm more just interested in the way he's going to talk about what's going on in the market. And and probably, this is my own personal opinion, putting it into it, um, and I know you might agree with some of it, but probably just kind of say, hey, we got status quo here. We're going along, and he's going to try and find the words that, that cause the market to be calm. I don't envision, um, this is me, you know, that he's going to put anything out there startling, especially with the week that we've had Monday and Tuesday. So that's why it's kind of cool. You know he's going to get some interesting questions, man. That's for sure. Uh, and we'll see how he handles them at 2.30. But the market catching quite a bit. You know, I was just looking at, Kevin, some of the pullbacks we've gotten. Um, I mean, the NASDAQ 100, not even back, Kevin, to like a 382 of the move we had just since May. You have Google and Microsoft. Microsoft. I mean, just barely giving up some of the all-time highs. There's still a lot of strength in this market when you look at where some of these bigger stocks are. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, we've had a, you know, you can make the case four to five percent correction in this market. You've still got a lot of good news going on. You've got a China situation that caused some uncertainty that looks like it's dissipating, and you've got low interest rates and good earnings and 
at the end of the day, I think we're going to look back on this last week or so and say another dip for buying, Tommy. Those 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 uh, dip buyers, they have been rewarded handsomely for the better part of, uh, you could argue, a decade or more. Uh, FedEx, real quick. Uh, interesting. What do you see for them? I mean, the the they had a decent quarter, of course. Um, but what hurt them there is they had some rising costs. And, of course, I, I, I imagine um, Chairman Powell could even get a question about their earnings, talking about, you know, some of the, the influences weighing on them in terms of higher costs, higher wages, and supply disruption weighing on that profitability. What did you think as you saw those FedEx numbers come out last night? Yeah, that's kind of what we talked about in yesterday's show, how uh, even though uh, they're doing a lot of things right and they're raising prices, Going into the holiday season, you know, they're having trouble, as most of small, medium, and large businesses are, getting employees, right? Labor has been a big problem for all these companies, and yes. they've got rising costs across the board. I mean, just look at what is FedEx's major inputs, right? They've got um, paper. They've got gas for planes and trucks and and of all different sizes, and they've got labor to, to move boxes from one place to the other. So all those inputs for them are going higher. And you're getting into, you know, whether you want to admit it or not, the holiday season, which their business will be flying, but it's not as high margin as some of the other times of the year where, where they're shipping for business and things like that. So, um, yeah, th th this is the number, but listen, uh, I can't say this enough. FedEx is an unbelievable company doing unbelievably uh, great things, and their ground and their FedEx Express are surging. So, uh, you know, these are uh, questionable news on really good companies, usually spells opportunity, Tommy. Yeah, I mean, you put it on a, a chart just going back a year on the Thinkorswim platform here, and it looks like we're coming back to test the lows, which we are. I mean, the lows this year are 234. We got a bid ask at 236 right. this morning. Um, but you put it on a three-year weekly on that Thinkorswim platform, man, and you see that we came into 2020 at a price point of 150. Um, so quite the run-up it had. Maybe it's just testing that consolidation area. And I agree, man. Strong company. I mean, everything we're doing, folks, is getting delivered Uh from online purchases, and that's a trend that ain't going to change anytime soon. Uh, is interesting though, 450 million over a quarter for increased costs. That's going to give those who are arguing some of those inflationary tendencies a little bit of an argument. Uh, but the the question is, Kevin, where we go from here, right? As in, are those going to persist or not? And that's where the the debate kind of gets so interesting, uh, and we get to find out over the next three or six months, if not a little bit sooner than that. With everything else going on, we got Fed Day, we got some earnings going on. We, as you mentioned, we got some China news out there. We got markets in positive territory. What are you guys going to be talking about on the show coming up at 11 o'clock today, Kevin? So, three names. A uh, couple of them have earnings. Darden Restaurants. Uh, Life Fuller is going to do a presentation on Dar Darden Restaurants. Then KB Homes is, also has earnings, another housing uh, you know, builder. And then we're going to look at Uber in the first segment of the show. So Uber, Garden Restaurants, and KB Homes. Two earnings plays and, you know, frankly, something that, you know, their CEO came out in Uber and said, we're going to be profitable soon, and we're going to try and find out how in the world they're going to accomplish that. Tommy. Well, well, I'll be listening, man. The listeners, some of them, if you're listening long enough, you know I have some Uber in my newsletter, Kevin. Man, they've been hurt recently on that pullback. Uh, I like to see that announcement yesterday with some strong guidance saying maybe they'll break even this quarter versus potentially losing $100 million. Uh, but quite a pullback on that. Again, another interesting sector of the economy in terms of food delivery, right? DoorDash out there, Uber, Lyft. Uh, Uber was up 11% yesterday, man. That's going to be a great segment. I look forward to it. We'll be watching at 11 o'clock today, Kevin. Uh, have a great day, man. We look forward to the program on Fed Day especially. You too, Tommy. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure as always. Folks, tune in today, 11 o'clock. You heard about it. They'll be talking a little bit of retail dining and Darden restaurants. Uh, they'll be talking about Uber to kick things off as well. Should be a great program as we come into Fed Day. I'm sure they'll be talking about a little bit about that Fed as well. Uh, right now, folks, less than five minutes to go until the open. We got the S&Ps up 25 points. Uh, we'll see how we open today. Interesting. We've gotten some fireworks over the last couple of days on the open. Uh, interesting when you got to wait for the Fed decision. Usually we may get some action on the open. 
Uh, once we get that kind of opening trade, the opening volume, supply meeting demand, buyers and sellers, I imagine the market may calm down a bit and wait for the 2 o'clock announcement and the 2.30 p.m. press conference. Always an exciting day, especially uh, with so much up in the air in terms of what Chairman Powell has to talk about. And uh, as I put it in the FedEx, you know, getting back to it, as I talked about to Kevin, I mean, the number there, 450 million in added costs from a year earlier. You're talking about half a billion dollars that they needed to spend, and they're talking about wages. They're talking about reduced network efficiency, efficiency, excuse me, and increased the need to hire outside transportation services. Uh, interesting to see whether that's a transitory influence or those kind of wane as we get back to life as usual. Uh, tough when you're talking about driving up wages, because I don't imagine they'll be driving those wages down anytime soon. They might need to, might be able to save some money not going out to uh, hire outside transportation services, but wages going up, not sure they'll be going down anytime soon. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get markets open and we get the S&P up 24 points, NASDAQ 100 up 36 points, all the markets in positive territory right now. We'll jump to the banks real quick as we jump to JP Morgan up 1.5%. There's a, a, a rise for you. Um, JP Morgan, we'll jump to Bank of America shares, all the banks getting a lift up 1.8% right now. 
Citi up 1.6%, and we'll finish it with Wells Fargo up almost 2%. Back to J.P. Morgan real quick. Talking about Jamie Dimon, it's possible. It should, you should always realize, folks, it's possible. Excuse me, but he presents the case. The Fed could be forced into a sharp move next year. His quote, the Fed can't always be proactive. They always try to be, but it seems like they can be late to the party sometimes. You I mean, sometimes they're going to have to be reactive. I mean, you can only argue so long that maybe whether it's inflationary tendencies or transitive, right? And then what happens if you wait too long? And all of a sudden you got uh, an issue where they're not transitive and then you got to play catch up. That's the big fear of that inflationary debate. Diamond said that if those hot inflation figures continue into December, then U.S. policymakers will have to admit that at least part of the price increases are here to stay. I mean, he could be thinking, folks, that they're already here to stay and may just be hinting at some of that. I mean, that FedEx, you know, it's the stories continue to point to at least some degree of inflation persisting, right? Uh, whether we are above 2% is a real debate there because the Fed is just comfortable with 2%. They are now comfortable with being above 2% in a transitory nature, as long as that's gonna meander back to a mean of about 2%. And that doesn't mean that it has to go back to 1% to make up for the hot inflation. They're just gonna need a 2% number. It is possible that we can get back to that 2% number if you start seeing used car prices not be that big of an impact. But what I'll present to you is the other side of it that we've talked about. I mean, you got FedEx workers are gonna be making more money. You got rent prices rising by 17 to 20% in some of the Florida markets. You can't have rental prices to that degree, folks, and wage prices to that degree, and oil prices going up, and food prices going up because of supply constraints, and argue that all of it's, all of it's going to go away. It's not all going to go away. That's my opinion. There's going to be it to some degree. I think you're seeing uh, CEO of J.P. Morgan, Jamie Dimon, talking about that today. Um, and that was, he was doing an interview there, talking about, yeah, the Fed can't always be proactive, as I said, uh, but interesting to see him talking about. And, I, you know, he says he doubts December, people will say it's transitory when it's now been going on for quite a while. Well, you could make that argument in September, folks, okay? You could definitely make that argument in September. Inflation, to me, it looks like there's a part of part that's transitory and there's a part that's not. That's not a disaster. I would agree it's not a disaster either. What does become tough for the market, though, this is where to separate, okay? It is not a disaster for the economy if the market pulls back from some of the multiples that are existing on some of the growth companies in particular, okay? Yes, that would cause some pause in terms of whether it's earnings growth in the future, right? Maybe those higher costs are gonna hit earnings in a big way, that's gonna cause the multiples to decrease dramatically, not gonna crush the economy, okay? But it could really pull back some of those prices and we got a glimpse of that on Monday, let alone if we ever start seeing some really rising yields, that could weigh on some of those growth companies as well. Rising yields is not what you wanna see in some of those growth companies because of the multiples that they are dealing with. All right, let's jump around to some of the other stories we're looking at today. Uh, Kevin mentioned it. They're going to be talking about Uber. I'll be listening to kick off Fast Market at 11 o'clock. And Uber, so the key of what they mentioned yesterday, they had an SEC filing, and uh, they updated some of their outlooks on Uber. They now see quarterly revenue 22.8 to 23.2 billion. Gross bookings for the second quarter. Now, this is the third quarter we're currently in. 21.5 billion. So they're looking for 22.8 to 23.2, so an increase. Interesting when you look at the breakdown, right? Mobility, 8.6 billion. Food delivery, 12.9. That is a staggering number when you look at Uber Eats and the amount of money that they are taking in compared to even their mobility business. Uh, they say that crisis breeds opportunity. I believe, isn't that in Chinese? In Chinese, I believe that the, the word... Crisis can also mean opportunity, something like that. I'll get that saying up. But crisis breeds opportunity, and that's certainly been true of Uber in the last 18 months. I mean, Uber, um, what do they buy? They bought a couple companies, right? Did they buy Grubhub, possibly? They were going after DoorDash initially, uh, and then they bought the alcohol delivery service Drizzly, I think. Um, Uber said it also expects adjusted earnings for interest and taxes. This is the key here. They're going to range from a loss of $25 million to a profit of $25 million. The last time they gave an outlook, they thought they were going to lose better than a loss in 100 million. So they thought they'd lose about 100 million or less. Now they say, man, we might break even. We might actually be profitable. And the market, man, any time you can get into a company, folks, and look at this, it's accelerating on the open as well, up another 2.8% today. They were up 11% yesterday. This is one of the reasons I got into this stock early on. Now, man, we have meandered a pullback, folks. But Uber was 
transitioning to a profitable company before COVID. That was, that was the acceleration that they were about to come into. They were going to do it before the market anticipated. They were going to become a profitable company. COVID throws everything in flux for many companies, especially ride handling companies in particular. Uber benefits at least over that time. Now, I'm giving you the bull case here, okay, because we're in it. But they take the opportunity, as their CEO said, and they grow the Uber Eats business over that time. Now, business travel is not coming back to the degree that it was anytime soon. But recreational travel and just daily life travel of Uber, I mean, I, I often said that Uber has now become a verb in the English language. Anytime a company's name can become a, 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 a verb that many people use, let's Uber to the party, that's something that's here to stay and you're seeing a lift. I mean, this is a weekly we have here, so quite a bar we have going on. Back to the daily though, you see the acceleration yesterday. We've broken out of that downtrend on Uber and just like that, we get back to prices that we were trading at almost four and a half months ago in May 11th, uh, Uber. And nice to see it back above that acceleration because you look at the earnings that we had in May, you had volume of 79 million shares, but man, this thing yesterday plows higher on 106 million shares. Be interesting to see what they talk about on Fast Market if they kick off the program with Uber. Uh, another one of my companies in terms of a story of uh, good and bad, Disney on the flip side yesterday, not what you want to see. Up a little bit with the market today, up two thirds percent, but Disney, their CEO, Bob Chapek, Chapek? Um, speaking at a Goldman Sachs conference yesterday, talking about potential production delays on some of the production that they have going on. That could hurt potential subscriber growth. Uh, let's get into actually what they talked about here to get the exact numbers they're talking about. And so what he had to say, production delays will temper the growth in new streaming customers this quarter. That's what sent shares down about 4.2% yesterday. Uh, they have 61 movies and 17 episodic TVs in production. The rise of the recent Delta variant of COVID-19, that's resulted in some shutdowns. You also have an expiration of subscriber offers in India, which they've seen some dramatic growth, as well as Latin America. Um, they are looking for low single-digit millions of subscribers. I mean, that's probably, what, like 2 million, 3 million subscribers for the current quarter. The market was looking for more than that. They, um, they're they Pushing it off, though, they're saying this is not going to affect our longer term number the market. Not quite sure that that's going to be the case with the sell off of four plus percent yesterday. We're very bullish and confident about our long term subscriber growth, but we're going to see a little bit more noise. That's one way to categorize it by the CEO. Uh, then I think maybe the street expects in terms of our ultimate projections quarter to quarter. Excuse me, folks. And, you know, noise. I mean, that's the argument that everybody's making with the jobs misses, right? We miss on non-farm payroll. They say, ah, it's a little bit of volatility right now with the Delta variant. We're going to find out, folks, over the next three, six months, whether that's volatility or whether that's a trend that we're in. Stay tuned, folks. We're going to come back with Teddy Kegstat. We'll be talking a little for it. Be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now, positive by 17. We got a Fed day. We got an announcement at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We got a press conference at 2.30. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Every Wednesday at 40 past the hour, folks, we talk to Teddy. You can reach Teddy every trading day at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy, Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning. Happy Fed day. Happy Fed day, man. Always a little exciting. Uh, We've had a few fireworks in the markets in general since the last time we talked to you last week. Uh, yeah. What do you see going on right now in this market? Uh, what do you want to talk about? The Fed, the uh, the Chinese? Let's start with problem. <laughs> I know, right? Let's start with the Fed. Why not? I mean, I'm not sure if you were listening. We were talking to, you know, Kevin Hanks talking a little inflation. I, I'm not sure if you saw FedEx had their numbers out mm -hmm. last night. Uh, almost half a billion dollars in extra costs in the last mm -hmm. quarter dealing with wages, dealing with supply constraints, et cetera. Um, you looking for anything today in terms of what we'll see out of either the statement or the press conference with Chairman Powell? Uh, I think it's going to be more of the same. I think they're going to downplay inflation. Uh, I think that they're going to – obviously, they're not raising interest rates. I mean that would be <laughs> that would be a shock. Sure. So um, I think the only thing that you can really listen for is <clears throat> are they going to – you know, they – they said they're going to start tapering, you know, so maybe they change that speak today and say that maybe they're going to not taper as quickly as they were initially thinking of doing a few weeks ago. That's maybe the one change you might hear for, out of them today. Outside of that, it's going to be the same blah, blah, blah. Inflation is sure. not a problem. It's under control. Everything's going to be fine, blah, 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 you know, because they're not going to admit a problem until we're four years down into it, you know. So um, I'm not sure if you heard you talking about JP uh, with, with Jamie Dimon out there early in the show and just talking about that. He's already hinting, I think, a little bit in terms of what he may think and that maybe the Fed can't always be proactive. They could be. But the, mm -hmm. the logic they're using there is is maybe leading, and this is me putting some of my bias, bias in there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what they're saying right now is that if they hold on to that past the point that it's undeniable, then it might be a little too late and they'll have to force that action. Because when right. I see the stories out there about FedEx, right, I see, I mean, the Florida real estate market, Teddy, along with many markets, mm -hmm. but we have rent prices rising 20%, man. I see stories all the time, whether it's Miami, Tampa, 20% mm -hmm. um, rental prices, wages increasing, supply mm -hmm. constraints going on, FedEx spending half a billion dollars in 90 days just to add costs to keep up with what they're doing. Um, those are some factors that they're going to have to wane pretty quickly for the transitory argument, I think, to hold true. Um, and mm -hmm. I don't know how they happen, man. I'll be, you know, I'll, I'll be the first one watching with popcorn if somehow we get a pullback in all those prices that leads to no inflation. Mm -hmm. But that's going to be pretty harsh, man, with everything, all those factors playing <clears throat> out in the market. Sure. Well, you know, also nobody thinks about the inflation caused by taxation, too. You know, because as prices go up, taxes go up, too, even if they don't raise the percentage. You know, sure. so I mean, that's a problem. And then there's our state, which they're raising property taxes again in Chicago. They're doing, and I mean, 
it's tied to inflation. So at the rate of inflation, you're looking at property taxes Ooh. going up absurdly, you know, yeah. which is driving yeah. closing businesses. They just had an announcement of a major uh, nursery to close that's been in the, in the Chicagoland area for over 100 years, you know. Man. So, yeah. I mean, and that's that's what we're going to start to see more and more of over the next few months. And the Fed's in denial of it. The government's in denial of it. You, Everything is local. You can't tell everyone I talk about, are you seeing the same thing in your areas? And they are saying the same thing, especially in the blue states. You know, yeah. so I yeah. mean, six months, I guarantee you a year from now, most mom and pop restaurants in blue states will no longer be open anymore. You're only going to see big, your only options will be like going to, Gibson's, you know, like the Let Us Entertain You chains, you know, Darden, Olive Garden, you know, Capital. Well, I hope Hill, not. Let's uh, you know, give give so. those businesses some business, folks, because, yeah, you so. need those for sure, oh, man. Those, that's why I, those are the only ones I support right I now. Agree. I agree. I agree. And they, and they even say it. They say their foot traffic is down. The only thing keeping them going is carry out. You know, that's probably so. one of the toughest areas of the economy, right? Mom and pop restaurants over mm -hmm. the last 18 months, man, with all that's going been going on. Right. Just uh, whew, just quite a tough right. deal, I'm sure. So and this uh, impacts jump. the markets, especially with the interest oh. rates and the, and the currencies, you know. Yeah. So and I think that the Fed, right, you know, like I said, we're not going to see much. You can see the bond market, the 10 year market. They haven't done anything for the, the past 24 hours, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's normal. The dollar is very mixed today. You know, you have um, dollar weakness in some of your majors, but you also have dollar strength in some of your majors. You know, so I mean, like the pounds down today, the euro is up, the Swiss is down. You know, the Swiss is up against the dollar, meaning you dollar Swiss down. It's a chop fest. You know, until 115 today, I would say most, if you look at the charts, they've been going sideways. You know. Are we going to get a breakout to the upside or downside? I think you really have to key off of what happens with the interest rates as it follows through tomorrow, you know, because the algos are going to probably, if we have any action, it's just going to be a, a big range trade today. We're not going to set any course of direction, you know, because the Fed's not going to do anything today that's going to be a surprise, Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, um, and it is almost surprising in that, and I agree with you, but that they, that they've, not been allowed to, but then the market really hasn't freaked out at all mm -hmm. um, with the delay that we keep seeing, right? And saying that, mm -hmm. well, you know, I thought we were going to get the jobs back in. I mean, remember the well, when was the first month we had a million dollar, uh, excuse me, a million job non farm payroll estimate? Was it like mm -hmm. April or, or, you know what I mean? I mean, the, the mm -hmm. first estimates, man, was we were going to roar back coming right. out of the vaccinations that were happening in whether right. it was March, right? April, May, mm -hmm. and things were just going to charge out of that. And each time we've kind of missed, the market's taken the best case scenario approach, I think, is what I find so interesting to saying, well, we missed. But if you look at, you know, like last month's non farm payroll, say, well, if you look at it on a three month average, we're doing 700,000. It's like, well, you weren't saying that beforehand when we were looking right. for, you know, 700,000 for that month sure. and we only got 200,000. Now you're just giving me the, well, explain the best case scenario situation. Um, mm -hmm. And they could be right, okay? Like, they, you know, I know you got right. your case, I got my case. They obviously sure. could be right, but you're supposed mm -hmm. to be pricing in probabilities of different scenarios. And I feel like the market just isn't mm -hmm. pricing in enough of a probability that maybe the best case scenario might not be playing out over the next couple right. months, man. Well, uh, October's coming up, my friend. I'm looking for the S&Ps to take a huge, huge dive. A huge and what do you where is where is huge on, on uh, the scale of where we are in terms of what kind of a move you look for on that? Oh, I wouldn't doubt that we're setting ourselves up for probably a 25 to 35 percent correction. I mean, okay. I'm th and I think we're actually setting we're setting ourselves up for the first beginning of a bear market for probably the next three to four years at least. Okay, you honest. heard it, folks. Here's the thing: is inflation's cutting profit margins. I was li listening to you talk about Uber. It, over to, before the pandemic, they were at negative <clears throat> returns as far as I mean, they were their net income was growing or their, their total gross income was growing, but their net income wasn't. You know, their profitability was just going through the floor. They're negative. You know, yeah. you can't be a, a negative profit company. That's in theory that works under you know in fantasy yeah. land, but it doesn't it's supposed to be a, the, the a finite world. period of time that that exists for sure. Correct. You know, and this is going to hit. Earnings drive the markets, and as earnings get squeezed because of inflation, I mean, people can't just blame it on wages. The wages need to go up to begin with. Cut the upper agree. wages and, and 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 balance it out. There should be sure. no net effect on that one. That's an argument yeah. that you can throw out the window, but you cannot deny the fact that costs are going up. And then there's a the part that you people aren't going to work. 
And if people aren't going sure. to work, businesses can't do things. They can't meet their, their goals. So they're, they're not going to bring in as much revenue. And then their costs are going up at the same time. So I mean, it can happen, man. You got FedEx. Right. FedEx down almost 40% from its highs. Right. And that's a great company. So, yeah. Absolutely. you know, it's, Well, Absolutely. Teddy, we appreciate the update as always, man. I'm sure we'll have some fireworks before we talk to you next Wednesday. Have a great week, man. Okay. $100 oil coming too soon. <laughs> I love it. We didn't get there. $100 oil. We're still on it, folks. That oil market. It's strong, man. Thanks, Teddy. Have a great week, man. Take care. See you next okay. Week. We'll be right back, folks. Skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Target First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory. We got Fed Day coming up in about four hours. We get an, an announcement at 10 o'clock today. We got live programming all day, folks. Basil Chapman's up next. Fast Market coming up at 11. They'll be talking a little bit of Uber. They'll be talking a little bit of Darden Restaurants in there, as well as some other equities. We have our man Larry at 12, Steve Rhodes at 1, Dave White at 2 o'clock. He'll have some action during Fed Hour. And Tom O'Brien, my dad, wraps things up from 3 till 4. Live programming all day at TFNN. Jumping around to some of the other stories out there. Uh, I love the streamers of... Disney, Netflix catching a bid today, and I think this is a great move on their behalf because one of the reasons that I often talk about that I love Disney so much is the number of brands that they have that they can rely on for future content. Netflix going to buy the entire catalog of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory author Roald Dahl. So he died in 1990, I believe. This is his estate, and they had already leased this um, that brand for, yeah, 
Um, several doll works have already been adapted into movies and received acclaim. So they have Willy Walk and the Chocolate Factory, um, a remake of the film. Netflix had already been working on a series on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Matilda the Musical. Um, they got James and the Giant Peach in there, a bunch of different ones they had in there. I don't know if they have it in here. They paid about $500 million, they talked about, potentially for that three-year deal alone. So this one expected to fetch some big numbers, but that is what you need um, to be a streaming company, folks. You need content brands, because one of the things I would always say is, tell me one thing that Netflix has that you can merchandise. And yeah, there's Stranger Things, potentially. I know there's some merchandise out there, but compare the merchandising ability of Netflix's content versus the merchandising ability of Disney's content, and it gives you an idea of the content that Disney has. I mean, Disney's got Star Wars, Marvel, let alone Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and everything that goes along with Disney that they have. Disney's got Fox in there. They got The Simpsons. They got everything, right? Netflix needs more of that, and you're seeing it, uh, especially when you get into kids, too. Uh, one of the things I always loved about Disney, I'd say, you got kids in the house, folks. You're going to order Disney. You're never going to cancel. I think Netflix is onto that, so a good move on their behalf, and they are right up to the upper boundary uh, of that recent consolidation after pulling back, but a strong move on Netflix. All right, folks, stay tuned. going to be an interesting day in the markets. we got all the markets in green coming in to a Fed announcement at 2 o'clock today. Thanks for joining me, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up. Tiger Tech Shadow next. Have a great one, everybody.